Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, this time we have a, uh, another one of those buddy do projects, you know, <laughs> one of those ones where, you know, your friend says, Hey, you think you could? Yeah. Well, it challenge accepted. Um, I got a buddy named Doug. He's got a, one of those, uh, off-road, uh, it's like a two buggy race cars. It's got LS1 engine in it and, you know, hundreds of horsepower and all sorts of fun stuff in it. Um, he is going to the King of the Hammers this year. And the thing is, because he bought himself a new trailer, uh, the problem is the trailer that he's now using for his race tow vehicle or tow trailer is a smidge narrower than his previous one. So he can't leave the race wheels on the, on the buggy when he, uh, when he puts it in the trailer. Because of that, he picked up a set of cheap rims. And um, that way he can put you know, narrow standard tires on to roll it in and out of the garage and on, in and off the trailer. The problem is that the center hole of the rim is a bit smaller than the size of the hub that it has to fit over. And the bolt pattern is all the same, uh, but it just has to slide over that hub. So he's asked me to help him out with this one and uh, figure out what we can do. It's actually probably too big of a job for me to really properly do on the mill normally, so we're going to have to come up with a bit of a different way of doing it. Um, yeah, <laughs> this could be interesting. The hub here, this, he left me one of his hubs off of the, uh, or well, hub covers or whatever, hub caps off the hubs to use as a sizing gauge. And as you can see, it won't go through. What we need to do is take a little bit out of the center here. And um, I know before anybody gets too uptight, this, this vehicle will never see the highway. These rims will never see anything more than probably about 10 miles an hour. Um, 16k whatever uh, the it's just basically just to move it around the pits a little bit and get it into the trailer uh, in and out of the trailer so if we take a bit of material out of the center here it's not going to be that big of a deal uh, a lot of aftermarket winter rims are you know made uh, bolt hole centric not hub centric and you know you put them on your uh, put them on your car with the winter rims or winter tires on them and the center doesn't even touch the hub so this is not going to be a big deal the issue comes down to how we're going to set it up on the mill. That's going to be the complex part. But as I say, we have to um, we have to make that little hub basically fit through that hole on all four rims. Now, as far as this job is concerned, it probably is up pushing the scope of this little machine, but um, we're going to do it anyway. The um, rim is going to sit here on top of the rotary table. Uh, now. I'm going to have to space it off with some one to three blocks. But the thing is to start with, I need to make sure that the quill of the machine is uh, in line with the hole in the very center here. That'll make things easier for us as far as the offset in order to turn the table and run the end mill on the inside of that hole, the hub hole. Now I'm going to use this little jig that, or well, little tool that uh, we made up a few of these when I was in machine class. It's a Morse taper three on one end and three quarters of an inch on the other side. Uh, I have a couple of these of different sizes and you know, thanks Jerry. That was a lot of fun when doing that course with you. But um, it turns out to be a very handy little tool for finding the center of the uh, center of the rotary table. This, uh, you know, it was all cut in one, uh, one mounting and then parted off. So everything is in, in line with each other. The outer diameter, the smaller journal and the taper. I can also leave this in place as I'm machining uh, because it's going to clear everything that we're doing. Okay, so with a little bit of fiddling, we're now within about a half thousandth of concentricity all the way around. And uh, I mean, for the purposes of this project, that'll be just fine. Now the y-axis is going to stay locked. And we'll be, or sorry, the x-axis is going to stay locked. The y-axis is what we're going to be using to offset with. Now this is going to be very awkward, but now is the time where we're going to mount the rim to the rotary table. And I'll be using my four um, one, two, three blocks. All right, so like I was saying before, there's not quite enough space to mount this. See, I'm interfering with the, uh, uh, I'm interfering with the column in the back here. So we're going to have to bring the table my way. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, little man's happily playing in the background there. Nice he let daddy come out to the shop and play. And... Oh. I think somebody just dropped his wrench. Either that or threw it. Alright. Now, theoretically we should have just enough space to get away with this. Give me a minute, buddy. Just give daddy a minute. Nice thing is this isn't a very deep bore, so it buys us a little forgiveness if it's a forgiveness, it's only what eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, whatever. Some of that neighborhood. Thickness of material. Now I totally admit to this being a completely sketchy setup but you run with what you got. That's not bad. Again, we're gonna take very light cuts. Once we get this set up. So, because... Now the thing is, because we have, um, you know, everything set up to this point, what I need to do is now disengage the worm screw on the uh, table, the worm drive, on the rotary table so I can just spin this. And then once I get it to the point where on average um, we're the same distance uh, from the uh, quill, no matter which, or from the well, tool or whatever, from the center line of the quill, no matter where I have this rim rotated, then we're basically offset the right amount but still um, uh, then that makes the rim concentric with the table. That then allows us to take our take our cut from the inside. But I just need to make sure my one, two, three blocks are not going to interfere with our. Yeah, make sure the one, two, three blocks are not going to interfere with our cutter, because that would be a bad thing. So one thing I found out the hard way here, after spending a while messing with this, is that the in looking at it, you can even see. The center hole is actually stamped. It's not really true or machined to anything. So, um, yeah, in a nutshell, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to make sure it's got enough clearance to get the um, uh, to get the hub through. I what I've done is after spinning it here, I'm just taking a running average as I'm watching the needle bounce back and forth, taking a running average, including dealing with the the high and low spots where its needles bouncing. And yeah, we're probably within five or so, five thou or so. Um, it's as close as we're going to get. Uh, again, you know, they're, uh, I think, yeah, kind of curious where these rims are made. But anyway, the, uh, the issue is that uh, I don't actually have a clean register to get off the center there. So I'm just taking a running average and we'll leave a little bit of extra clearance. So I just got off the phone with Doug and I mean seeing as this doesn't have to be a super super precision fit anyway what we've decided to do is take this bore here and actually make it probably about 30 40 thousandths larger than the um, diameter of the hub uh, just just so there's a bit of playroom there I got it as close as I can get it as far as being concentric so here we go we're going to use a cordless drill here with a Torx bit I happen to have a Torx bolt, uh, well, a small Torx bolt, into the shaft of the rotary table. The handle just won't fit in what we're doing here. Got a nut, jam nut on there. And that way, what we can do is apply our feed this way, kind of a power feed. So I'm going to see, I'm just going to touch off a little bit and then back up a little bit and then make a uh, trip around just so that I know that we're not going to have a really deep bite somewhere. And then we'll slowly work our way in. Okay, we're touched off there. Back off 20 thou.
again. Another 10. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> well, at least we have a round hole now. Let's see where we're at for a, for a measurement. Yeah, so that measurement I took earlier was actually, sadly, not going to be accurate just simply because of the fact the hole wasn't round. So this is this will be close enough for what we need to know for a measurement. <clears throat> and I'm still shaky. 4.225. And that's pretty much the same size as the... Uh, same size as the hub. So now, <clears throat> we, uh, I can, I'm just going to reset my zero here on my, um, my lead screw. Now, theoretically, if we take two more passes at um, 10 thousandths a pass, then we should have 40 thousandths worth of clearance between the center hub and, and, the, uh, and the center of the rim. Which, again, will be just fine for our purposes. Final pass. You know, it makes me thinking that the uh, power feed for the rotary table might not be a bad project. My finger tr or trigger finger has a bit of a cramp in it right now. Here we go. All right. And you know, that surface finish is actually better than I thought it would be, for one thing. And it was way quieter than I thought it would be. I, with all this, you know, basic big bell sitting out here, I was expecting this thing to scream like a banshee when I was working on it. But that, yeah, I'm impressed. I like that. Now, I know that the end mill itself has some rust and stuff on it. That's how I got it in a batch of used end mills a while back. Um, the previous owner burnt the corners off of it, but the edges, the sides of the flutes are the sharpest um, out of all the end mills I have. So they must have just cooked the end and the sides never got used. So that's why I'm using it for this because I need the sides. Now, let's take our hub and we should have a little bit of play now. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for. Sweet. All right, I like that. So, <laughs> amazing how sometimes something goes from a precision job to a, well, let's just make it work type job. So that's where we're at. Um, so you've seen me do one. Uh, you don't need to see me do the other three. Uh, we'll catch up with you once the other three are done. All right, there we go. Just finished up number four. You know, I've got a few little rags here to take off, little burrs and whatever. But, yep, I mean, for an end mill that had a burnt up front end, it actually does a fairly nice job side milling. So, glad I kept it. Uh, maybe someday if I ever have the chance of getting something that'll sharpen end mills, this would be, I think that's going to be number one for getting resharpened. So, we get, uh, get this guy out. So anyway, need to break it down, clean it up, and uh, 
that can uh, give Dougie back his rims. He is going to be at the King of the Hammers. So if you want to keep an eye out for uh, Dougie's uh, little buggy, number 1025, the King of the Hammers, uh, he'll be racing on February 5th in the Everyman's Challenge on that Wednesday. And then the uh, final race of the, of the event is on the 7th, the Friday. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully he places well. I, you know, <laughs> he's, uh, you know, it's really cool to see the video of him out ripping around this thing. So he's just grinning ear to ear. He loves it. So, um, otherwise, I hope you found it at least marginally interesting. Uh, again, it was a bit of a sketchy setup, that's for sure. And, you know, really, it's, it was pushing the limits of the size of uh, work envelope I can do in this machine. But, I mean, that's what we do when we're at home. We make stuff do. So, but, yeah. Uh, otherwise, thank you all for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing, everybody who has subscribed. Uh, if you haven't, thanks for coming by. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for all the comments, all the likes, um, people who get in co contact, email, you know, comments, whatever, it's great. Uh, I really enjoy hearing from everybody. So, otherwise, uh, thanks again. I'll see you all next time.